back, bitches. If you didn't notice, I haven't uploaded a video in five weeks. You probably missed me a shitload. I understand, but no need to be creepy about it. Where the fuck was I? Jesus Christ, that's polite of you to ask. And I'd be happy to tell you. But not right now. Just make sure you watch this entire video, because at some point, I will be revealing where I was for the past five weeks. Please try to contain your excitement. How disrespectful it would be for you to skip ahead to find the shocking news. Don't do that. Otherwise, I'll be canceling ass. In case you've forgotten, some of the other things I had to cancel included cigarettes, alcohol, sex, quarantine, and air. So don't test me. But for now, let's get on with the video. I can't help but wonder the impression I make on people if this is their first time seeing me after I say these things. They probably love me! In this video, I'm going to be telling you the seven mistakes that every intermediate guitar player makes when they try to improvise a solo. If you're guilty of these mistakes, well, sucks to be you. Mistake one, playing with bad rhythm. The first mistake that I want to emphasize is playing with bad rhythm. You can fix every other mistake in this video, but if you play with bad rhythm, none of it will even matter. To illustrate this problem better, I'll play two clips for you. The first one's going to be cool, but in the second one, I'm going to intentionally screw up the rhythm so you can hear how much of a noob I really sound like. Pretty big difference, eh? It was pretty challenging to intentionally play with bad rhythm. It pissed me off, but I'm not even mad. So what you actually heard was me recording a solo over a different BPM than the backing track. And for fun, I changed the BPM multiple times just to make it weirder. By the way, if you don't know what BPM stands for, <sighs> it stands for Brandon Plays Magnificently. So how do you fix this problem? You could try using a goddamn metronome once in a while. Don't know what a metronome is? It's a gnome on the subway. Also, why does gnome have a G in it? Fucking hell English is a dumb language, mate. Like, why do thought, though, rough, and thorough all look the same but have completely different pronunciations? Mistake two, having a shit tone. All right, so this isn't just an improvisation mistake, but it tends to come out more when you improvise. Basically, a lot of intermediate level improvisers sacrifice their legato tone for a more rough and jagged staccato tone without even being aware of it while they improvise. I know this is a mistake because I used to make this mistake myself. Staccato isn't necessarily wrong, but most play with a staccato tone because they're incapable of playing with a legato tone. Let's hear the difference.
So what's the solution to this problem? Legato means smooth and connected. So you want to act like how I interact with women. Smooth like peanut butter. And you want to be connected like your... Wi-Fi? Mistake number three. Convincing yourself you know the shapes. When you don't know the fucking shapes. You like that piece of paper transition there? My god, the production value of my videos is some next level shit. They call me Honest Branded, because honestly my production value is the best on earth. Subscribe to my channel for some more high quality technology, and drop a comment telling me about your life to help the algorithm. So let's talk about this next error. A lot of guitar players think they can improvise using scale shapes because they know them. But when the time comes to improvise, they freeze up and they get stuck in one spot on the fretboard and can't seem to get out of it. Now, why do you think that is? It's because you don't actually know them. There's a difference between playing scale shapes in time with a metronome versus actually internalizing them so that you can use them in a solo. The problem is, you've convinced yourself that you know them because you can do that first option there. But when it actually comes time to solo, you can't. Which reveals that you don't actually know them. And if you want to cry about it, I just want you to know that I'm here in my apartment and cannot help you because I don't care. What's the solution for this problem? Learn each shape and then practice soloing with one shape at a time in each place on the fretboard until you go through all the shapes. There you go. You need to force yourself to get used to them. Otherwise, I mean, you can just keep using that one pentatonic box shape your whole life, I don't care. Do whatever you want. Be an Uber driver. Mistake four, prioritizing scales instead of outlining chords. So once you conquer mistake three and you have the shapes internalized, you're gonna run into a new problem. Lucky you. But I mean, that is kind of how guitar playing works. Imagine you're at this level, but you wanna get to this level. Eventually you're gonna start getting there, but then the level that you wanna be is gonna start going up. And you're just always chasing that next level because that's just how fucking guitar playing works. Playing scales isn't technically wrong. But it's like saying yes to a 5 when a 9 is DTF. There are just better options out there. It's not 2 a.m. and we're not drunk and desperate. So we're gonna go with the better choice here, which is targeting chord tones. But before we do, make sure you fuck up that like button. If you want your solo to sound the best it can, you have to know what the notes of the chords are so that you can target them. Arpeggios are great for this because if you can go through the chord changes playing only arpeggios, you're gonna be outlining the chords perfectly. Big fun in the sun. Let's stack these examples up beside each other so you can hear the difference. Mistake number five, only using the high strings. Fun fact, everyone knows the E string really well. It's from playing bar chords. But as a result, noob improvisers will often stick to the high strings and they won't go to the middle strings because they're too afraid to venture over there. Just like most of you are afraid to leave a comment. Do that to help the algorithm. So if you're afraid to go to the middle strings, to that I say, stop being a pussy, mate. They're not gonna bite you like this dog would. You've got to get more comfortable with them. Let's listen to another clip where I show the differences. <laughs> Thank you.
Mistake six, screwing up the chord transitions. A lot of guitarists can sound decent soloing over one chord, but as soon as another chord comes, crash! They go off the rails on a crazy plane. God, I'm so funny and handsome. To fix this problem, again, you need to know what the notes are that make up the chords so you can target them between transitions. Otherwise, you're gonna train wreck. Wait a minute, who the fuck is that guy? I'm gonna show you two clips now, one where I nailed the chord transitions and another one where I completely crash. Now for the seventh and final mistake. But first, do you remember earlier in this video when I said I'd be revealing where the fuck I was for the past five weeks? Just make sure you watch this entire video because at some point I will be revealing where I was for the past five weeks. The time has come to share that with you. You see, I was working on a 16 video series called Improvisation Firestorm. In those videos, I cover all of the mistakes that we've been talking about here and go into super detail on how to solve them. I cover how I improvise solos, how I write solos, how to stop playing the same shit over backing tracks, a lot of arpeggios, and so on. Creating this series took a lot of time, almost five weeks to be exact. So that's what I've been up to. Where can you find this compilation of videos that explain to you how to improvise like a pro? In the best guitar program on the internet, obviously, 52 Week Guitar Player. Haha, -ha, so I piqued your curiosity. So you'd want to hear where I was for the past five weeks so I could self-promote my own shit. You subscribe to this, but in reality, I'm always working on something, whether it's 52 Week Guitar Player related or YouTube related. This is kind of my career after all. So if I ever disappear for a few weeks, it's because I'm prioritizing the segment of my audience that matters the most, my actual paying students. If you'd like to learn all these concepts and become an actual paying student of mine, book a call with me below. First, I'll force you to watch a video explaining the differences between a pro and a beginner player. Then afterwards, you can book the call. But don't book one if you're like 16 and broke. You'd probably rather watch Netflix and jerk off anyway, so save yourself the money and don't bother. You can always sign up to be a patron of mine and get absolutely nothing for doing so. Surprisingly, I even have people that have done this. Shout out to those three legends. You know who you are. So far, I'm making $11 a month from Patreon, which is still a little less than my monthly target, but we're gonna get there soon enough. Back to mistake number seven. Noob improvisers only play with their fingers. They don't play with their mind. Let me explain. You've internalized the scale shapes. You can play on all strings, but every time you go to improvise, that's all you play is the scale shapes and you fail to outline the chords. You might even be able to do this across the fretboard, but it still doesn't sound that good. You need to stop, relax, and think about what you're actually doing. Leave some damn space once in a while. You don't want to be overcome with paralysis during an improvisation because you're looking for notes. But once you can actually find those notes, you don't want to get stuck playing only what your fingers know. You want to be using both. That way you can create a sexy ass solo that people actually want to listen to. Basically what I'm trying to say is, it's easy to get consumed with what you're doing and forget to listen to the entire ensemble. You become so focused with what you're playing and trying to shred bro that you forget to listen to the music which is a mistake. And those are the seven improvisation mistakes that every intermediate guitar player makes. You're welcome for taking time out of my day to help you with your improvisational goals on guitar. You're probably pretty pumped. No happiness. Guitar chefs, we're on a mission to hit one mil before September of 2022, even with my random disappearances. We're going to the top. But don't subscribe to my channel. In fact, you know what? Just, just leave, okay? I don't want you here. <laughs>